Welcome to the Historics Refuel Podcast. I am Matthew Pretty, and today we bring you breaking news. Ferrari have just launched the new F80, and have they put the final nail in the V12 coffin? Stay tuned to find out. Buying or selling a classic car? Head to historics.co.uk or click below for a free valuation. Welcome everyone to the Historics HQ here in leafy Buckinghamshire. Today I am joined by auction expert Fraser, how are we? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, very good. And of course, long-time podcast guest, Dominic Blake. How are we? Hello, good. Good, good. Right, now before we start, please do like and subscribe. Follow us on all channels. Make sure you give us a thumbs up so we can keep doing this, of course. If you want to buy a catalogue for the next auction, there is a link below. We'll give you some more details a little bit later. And a quick thank you to all of our sponsors, of course, Charles and Dean, who would be interested in helping you with any finance you may need. Now, as mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit at first about the Ferrari F80. Three million pounds. It's just been unveiled and it's not yet been driven, so no one knows, but 1,200 brake horsepower, huge wing F1 technology. But three things they have got wrong with the F80 Ferrari. The price, it's a million pounds more than the McLaren W1. A million pounds, that's an awful lot. The engine, it's a V6, it's not a V12. And the looks... It's not quite as controversial as the Enzo. That said, the engine, the dynamics, the wizardry make it possibly the most advanced driving machine ever produced. And it's aggressive. So I'm quite excited. What about the fact that I can't probably fit into one? Well, that doesn't narrow it down, does it? I wish I could narrow it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, a three litre V6 twin turbo, as wonderful as it is, and we've seen Formula One and all that go that way. I'm sure you've seen the launch videos, which have just been a lot of presses, really. What do you think of the looks? Um, I quite like it, to be honest. Do you? It's quite extreme, yeah. And um, I saw the car out on the road being tested in its, in its um, test, you know, camo. Camo, yes. Um, about a month ago. Um, Where and were you, it, Fraser? Austria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it looks... Secret mission. Yeah. Can't talk about it too much. Um, <laughs> It looks crazy, but it is a big car. Oh, really they have big, to be, don't car. they? Yeah. Um, Length, width, what the whole thing? Everything, massive. Yeah, massive it's a, car. It's a bit of a change because the Enzo and even the F50 Enzo and the LaFerrari were very much, I think, bolder designs and sort of kicked off an era of DNA for the Ferrari of that era. Mm. Whereas I, the only thing I'd say about this, although I quite like the aggressive, aggressive nature of it. It's a bit sort of nondescript at the yeah. front, isn't it? I mean, it? The, the one they made a couple of years ago called the Daytona SP3. Yes. That looks That looks fun. Crazy. I think much better. Yeah. 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 A, a bit more um, sort of... So how many of these are on the market now then? So three well, million None on the market. All sold before they got going. Was it buy invite only? Oh, yeah. It will be. be. Yeah. yeah. I think Salesman's so. dream, isn't yeah, it? Our invite must have got lost. <laughs> <laughs> how many was they made? 799? Yeah. 799. And why? Is that million. significance? Is there a significance about the number 799? Or? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not possibly. <laughs> no, if you're not doing your research. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would imagine, I mean, at that sort of value, before they probably started to turn a spanner, we're looking at, you know, what, two and a half billion pounds worth in the bank ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And that's before they make an aperta, which I'm sure they will do, because they'll always cut the roof off of something to make some more money. Um, uh, the big thing, though, I still keep going, I, I just don't, I don't think they should have got rid of the V12. And I do think it probably signals yeah. the real end of V12. No, I think of the V12. Yeah, because why, you know, if, if Ferrari aren't going to do it. Yeah. Thing is with Ferrari, they've always been, you know, from day one, they sort of made road cars so that they could go racing. And that's yeah. what they've always done. And if you look all the way back, quite often their road cars were, you know, using whatever their race car was using yep. at the time. And now F1 uses a V6, their Le Mans car uses a V6. Well, this is a version of that Le Mans car engine, yeah. isn't it? Okay. It's actually, we should have probably expected it. Yeah, I mean, the Le Mans car, I think, tapped out at 800 brake horsepower, I think, from reading it, and that's because of what you're Only. allowed. But it's the same engine, throttled, yeah. and then with five electric motors. Yeah. And that, ironically, we were discussing this before, you can't actually... So it's a hybrid. You can't drive it on electric, though. You can't drive it electric only. I quite like the Ferrari have done this. They said, no, no, in the DNA, it's just for performance. It's not for driving an electric. Um, it's not to, you know, drive around London. It is just purely for performance. And what are the figures in this car? So 1,200 brake 1200 horsepower. Brake horsepower. Yeah. 800 brake horsepower from a 3-litre V6. The rest of it is from the electric motors. Should be enough. I think, what's we got? I think 0 to 60 was two point. Oh, two point something seconds. Yeah, that's something what I would consider to be like motorbike speeds, really. Yes. Yeah. Not yeah. to 124, which is 200 kilometers an hour, is just a little over five seconds. It's what a normal 
sort of souped Nearly up as fast car. as Fraser and his M3. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So by the time you get to 60, they're doing 125 miles an hour in that car. Crazy. Although no one will ever drive them like that. That's the funniest but it, part. I yeah, exactly that. Yeah. I mean, we always joke about some of the more modern F1 cars. I mean, we see old F1 cars doing historic Grand Prix at Goodwood and so on and so forth. Well, how is anyone going to do that with more modern Grand Prix cars? And even with this now, it's so complex. Yeah, wait till, it, wait till those five, ju- five yeah. motors go wrong. Can you just yeah. park it in the garage and turn the key? Uh, that's going to be the thing. And at three million pounds, would you want to? That's the big thing so that you say about the price. And we were speaking earlier, if you look back 10 years ago when they did the McLaren, the Porsche, the Ferrari, yeah. um, I, I don't know what the price were when they were new, but the Ferrari, it's not the one I'd pick of the three. No, but... But it's probably two or three times the price. Yeah. And it's values, isn't now. it? And, yeah. I, and I said yeah. to you earlier about 799 made, which is not a small amount. I mean, it's not no. a grand amount, but it's not a small amount. I think McLaren are making nearly half that amount of the W1, which yeah. is very similar in hypercar stats. And it's £2 million, pounds, not £3 million. Pounds. But you almost guarantee that the Ferrari probably ends up it's being the be more the... valuable car in 20 years' Pro- time. Probably, yeah. Probably. Although I think... I don't know what the, these new Gordon Murray cars are worth now, but that's probably where you should put your money. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that's what I, I would do. Interesting right. to see what you would do. I mean, how do you think it's going to stack up against the... I mean, what we've got this new era of hypercar is they tend to... A bit like the 80s, really, isn't it? One-upmanship. Yeah. And what's so sad is that they're not quite... I mean, it was brilliant when all three were out at the same time, very similar time, but now it feels like Porsche have got, I think, two years at least until they bring something into so the table. So this will be old, old news by then. Um, yeah. Vietti are working on a W16... 1800 brake horsepower yeah lunatic yeah. mobile which will be fantastic when yeah, that comes crazy. out um and then obviously it's it's more of a mclaren ferrari head-to-head i think at the moment a bit like in formula one i think yeah quite so fair. overall and, so and aston martin um valkyrie valkyrie and, and then amg1 mm. of course so they're all about they're, they're, all, like, they're all doing it um all yeah. cars that we're probably never We've going seen a few to valkyries drive. driving around the west end there are a couple yeah. out there yeah. that seems to be their thing doesn't <laughs> yeah, it you know, you buy a valkyrie drive it around the west end park it up as you do probably yeah. curbed yeah, possibly. <laughs> Generally speaking, then, a fan or not a fan of the design? I don't, I don't. On the fence? I don't think I like it. Don't think you like it, no. Yeah. It's a bit fussy, but... Uh, I like the it, yeah. retro hard not like. slab-like aggression of it, which yeah. I've always liked. I didn't necessarily like when Ferrari went down. They've got this new thing going on, I've noticed, with this. They've released one called a 12-cylindry or something, a bit like a, their front-engine car. Yeah. And same with this, they've got like a black strip across the front yeah that seems like a new thing i'm not that well, i don't know if you took that off it that. would look really probably dull almost wouldn't maybe. it I mean, maybe you need that in there it's a bit and, funny. Yeah. and v12 we think is anyone really going to rekindle that or we no. is it up to us as classic car it will be the you know if if bugatti can make a w16 then you obviously still can make them it'll be the small bespoke ones. yeah stuff yeah. like that they'll be they'll be Companies doing it. Yeah. Pagani probably still do, I guess. But I don't know what the latest Pagani is. They were using a V12. Beautiful V12, actually, to be fair. Yeah. So it's going to be up to us in the classic car sphere to keep these V12s alive and keep them, yeah. you know, as everyone's panache at the top of the tree. That particular lovely burble of a V12. Burble's probably not the right word. So with that, let's talk a little bit about our favourite V12s and, and why we like a V12. Yeah. So when I, as you probably heard from these podcast before started my motor career in the 90s with Jaguar so our ultimate car the top of the range was the V12 and you could get that in the XJS my all time favourite you've got to mention XJS I'm not a better man but if I was (laughs) if you talk about cars you've got to talk about the beautiful 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 XJS Uh, (laughs) XJ12 the saloon car and then the Daimler double six I mean it was the pinnacle of what we saw is that V12 the same V12 that was in the Type Series 3 for instance and it's just all the way through or was it it was a a progression of that yeah it had all been since the 60s when it came out in E-Types. Um, just beautiful, smooth and powerful and refined. And that's, that went hand in hand, didn't it? If you're gonna sit in the gentleman's club environment of leather and wood, um, you need that. You need to be ensconced with the power and the softness and the, it, it's just a beautiful combination. It was a beautiful, beautiful combination. And because I think that those type of cars have moved away a little bit you know we're so modern now aren't cars are screens and touch this and touch that perhaps the v12 belongs in that era you well, know? I, I think the v12 as a luxury engine can be and it is cannon fodder for electric that's the worry i think yeah maybe because i think it it's the v12 was always brilliant because it was quiet if it was in a luxury car it had ultimate amounts of torque so it was smooth of course that is one thing the electric car really can 
yeah. can. And also, in, to be fair, you have to fill it up just as much as you'd have to charge one. It was, it was inefficient. And then when you bring in the, you know, the young pretender, the supercharger, and more modern small ranges that produce the same amount of power, that was the sort of death knell for the V12. Mm. Um, yeah. What do you think of a V12? Um, I love them. Um, one of my... I've picked a few here. Cool. Um, one of my favourites, BMW V12 from sort of the sort of 90s, 750s, really, But it, it was <laughs> smooth, wasn't it? It never really... Well, big, a big thing they did, you, you should be able to, and if you ever go and see one, you should be able to put a penny or a pound coin on its side, it top of the engine, it shouldn't fall over. That's how smooth it is. Yeah. And usually... When it's running. Yeah, when it's running, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's good. But like you've said, they're really smooth. They're, I think the, in a luxury car... It should be quite understressed, so yeah, it should just yeah. be, yeah, so they used be it in, relaxing. They had it in the 850, but that was a bit more luxury. Did they use it then in the sportier versions? Uh, seven, 750, yeah, and then all the way up to 850 CSI, CSI which was so would have been a different, that. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a different. I think that V12 different ballgame, was, really. one of the, was one of the rarest BMWs you could buy in that time. Yeah, and it had been so much money. Yeah. Yeah. Even even when even Park Lane BMW sold very, very few of those. Yeah, yeah, because you could have had a V8, which would have done the job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like the Americans did that. Americans prefer to push bigger versions of v8 yeah you know, rather than but that's americans for you yeah. rather than the yeah. subtle we can have it six liter seven liter it made six, no real difference they just liter, wanted yeah. to do it because they could do it but then if I, you go a bit more a bit more modern um back to ferrari i think a, a modern ferrari v12 in it with a modern gearbox it the irony mad. <laughs> i think that that was possibly the pinnacle of v12s yeah. and a shame that that's then sort of almost been not shelved, but it has been put yeah. aside because. But like I say, you look back in twenty sunk. years in it, and it's, if you, you know, if you put a different exhaust on one, it sounds just. Well, I'm afraid that they are yeah. complicated, um, as you know, and I won't mention it after this. But my XGS was a V12, um, and when you looked at it, the engine, it was oh, a beautiful thing, but I wouldn't, you wouldn't know, know where to start. start. I always I say that. A couple one. of the guys that worked I'm not sure my hands would get into the gaps. There's a good story about the I mean, mechanics. It's a piece of artwork. Yeah, the Jaguar yeah. mechanics. If you were sort of one of the new, first through the doors, you know, young lads, wet behind the ears, what they would do is that, you know, a V12 came in with a problem because it was such a to, to work on. <laughs> They'd just get the young lads to go and have to work on it. Because you know, it was uh, just a yeah. soup of bits. When you look at it, it's just pipes and yeah. cable really it's like a watch isn't it I wouldn't know where to parts start. left over when you put it back together yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see I quite so do you remember this, so this auction I've got that Toyota V12 Century yeah that's that sort of Lexus V12 engine and that had done well, that's the only Japanese V12 that was in a saloon car was it in I a think, limousine I think so so mm. Tom Exton of historic fame um, he actually sent me a clip of someone that put a straight through exhaust yeah. on one of those tourist centuries I think it was sat in like an underground Japanese car park and they're revving up a skyline or something and it was like, oh wow 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 yeah. suddenly next door to it, this saloon Toyota century suddenly is just bouncing off the rev limiter it sounds like a Formula One car the thing is when we had it um, you know that car done about 100,000 miles yeah. and I, felt like I wouldn't have guessed it no. you know you turn it on but and that it's available. silent in yeah, the next yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So literally the most understressed engine in the world, isn't it? It's just great. Peter With around. curtains, anti-macassars. I've sat in it a few times. It's one of the, the, the good place to go and have a nap. Yeah. What a great place well, to put an engine. <laughs> but the other one I like, and we said to us, in the Zonda, I think it was an, a, a brilliant engine in the Zonda. But that's sort of, it almost had to be. Yeah. Because the Zonda's such a pretty car. It had to have that sort of iconic engine, I think. I don't know if you've ever been, you know, if you've ever been around some of the GT1 cars, sort of the early 2000s, but I've wrote, um, Aston DBR9. That sounds... The sound, is it? It's the sound. Yeah. That's I think it's a bit like the Formula crazy. 1 era of V10s. It's, the sound is everything. And that's my last choice was a DB9. I mean, it's the only good bit on a DB9. Yeah. I mean, DB9s, I love them. They're pretty. But two, it's all Two the available at, so far yeah. on this but upcoming sale. It's all that engine. And the, the value for them now... Oh. You'd pay the engine because it's, oh, it's, it's stunning. We used to have a thing where you'd get a DB9, there was three things you had to do. You know, one was turn on the... Sports sort of sports mode. You have to tip the windows down, and you have to put it in like you know. You just the, have to hear the, the exhaust, exhaust. because it's yeah. a GT. You, have, you don't hear it enough, but it's stunning the noise that comes out of that car. And that was that's a car for you know sub twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, teens now. Yeah, I, I do think they will become more more appreciated. I think as we go on, based on the engine. Yeah. We saw it a couple of years ago with V8s. So everyone wanted the V8s. So I think people will want those. I think engines. also as people start using like. Even Jaguar XJs and BMW 8 7 Series, they use it more as a weekend car. Yes. You can kind of live with five miles per gun. Yeah. 
to a certain extent. Well, <laughs> that brings yeah. us on to, to a bit of news then. So let's just talk about what's been happening. I watched the Formula One at the weekend and there's another one coming up. And that was been yep. quite interesting because Lando's still chasing down Verstappen, ironically, McLaren. Um, yeah. It's, I don't think he's going to get there. He's going to struggle. Yeah, yeah I don't think he's going to get there. And now it looks like Hamilton has had a genius move of moving to Ferrari. Yeah, don't get don't get lured into the trap because next week they may well it's go back to their old ways. But yeah, a double head, isn't it? It's yeah, Mexico okay. next week. So, I do you think that Lando's got any chance of catching him? Um, no, no. As think, much well, as I like, unless he gets him. a DNF, of course. Unless there's a, an incident, that's yeah. where it really could. I think there's five races left. He's got to outscore him by ten or eleven points every race, which will happen. And watch his space for the young Oli Behrman. Yeah. Um, yes. Exciting prospect, I think. I know Formula One isn't really my thing, but I've been watching his career, and it's uh, from karting, I can most of them do. Uh, he's doing really well. Yeah. 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 I think he's busy. Haas now? Yeah, I think he's with the Haas yeah. team. Yeah. So, a, did he get a point for Ferrari and for Haas this year? In the same year. In the yeah. same year. Yeah. Which I don't think has been done. And one of the youngest before. starting Formula One drivers, British drivers ever. ever. I still think yeah. it's fantastic how we Good going. still produce <laughs> such great Formula One drivers as well as you know some I mean, of the teams that are based here. The thing is, when I was so when I was a lot younger, I did a bit of karting. You mean a lot younger? How young were you? How long can you? How young Eight. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. And the UK really <laughs> is the you know it's the place to do it. Loads yeah. of people would come over here and um, but yeah, you know, the, ev- were there's you always really good. It's all right. The thing is, you need. Um, Weren't you in a football show? You need a big checkbook for that. Let us write down. Yeah, you need a big checkbook. Speak to the boss. Speak <laughs> yeah. to Mark Perkins. He'll fund you. So in other and bad news, there's rumours of a tax hike on fuel again. So levy on fuel. The government are thinking about putting more on that. Now, it's all bad news at the moment, terribly, and waiting for this sodding yeah. budget. But actually, and this is me just reading between the lines, this is just trying to make us buy electric cars. People are starting to realise now electric cars aren't what they're cracked up to be. The sales figures have diminished drastically this year. And also, if you look at some of them on the like second-hand market, yeah. I, could, I never really look, but I see things. on. So what's the best way of making yeah. people buy electric cars? Make combustion engines incredibly expensive. Yeah, so you can't. It's that sort of, oh, in that case, we can't make them any cheaper. So what we do is we make them more expensive. Yeah. That's what it smacks off to me. But so. aren't the road tax benefits for electric cars sort of diminishing as well? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. having you both ways. They're having they? you both ways, but yeah. making you buy electric, so you have to do it now. So all the benefits have gone, but you've got to do that if you don't like it. So, yeah, I'm not, not big on that. So that's happening, unfortunately. Time to buy a classic. Definitely, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, any news you can think of, Don? Well, you, Les, it's a great idea. Pardon? Yeah, because you can ditch those modern cars that cost you a fortune and buy a classic car mm-hmm. from us and drive it you less charge free. Yeah, which I think are. fine. Straight it's crazy, in. isn't it? Isn't it? If we all went into London, there was three million classic cars going around. It'd be a lot worse, wouldn't it, for the environment? But for the I, environment, no, not for the environment. <laughs> for the environment, no, because these cars have never they haven't had to be rebuilt. They've been pulled out of the ground. And that I mean, no, yeah, okay, true. don't get me wrong. You give lots of children asthma, so that's not great. Um, no, but if you, it, it's okay if you pay um, twelve pounds a day. There you go. So that's fine then. Yeah. Yeah. Don't well, worry about them that. Before, you know, if, it, mm. if they really wanted to stop that, they'd just stop cars. Well, you wouldn't just charge cars. You'd just. Well, supercharged Range Rover was you less free. Yeah. How can that be? Work that one out. I had, okay. I had thirty pound a year tax for my Mercedes. I had. But it wasn't you less free. So, <laughs> so you're telling me it was good for good for the environment. So I have to pay less tax, but I can't go into London. It's such a farce, isn't yeah, it? It's absolutely yeah. rubbish. I quite like that idea, though. You les everyone go, everyone in London buy a classic car, and then wouldn't it look a lovely place? Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. fingers well, up to the London Mayor. Um, Park Lane full of E types and XJSs. V12 ones. The worry, the worry is it, they'll all be just like falling apart, really, wouldn't they? Because everybody's bangonomics, really. <laughs> um, new GT3 is out, so that merry go round starts for them. Poor Porsche people that are obsessed with whatever's new and putting them on yeah. finance. Although the, the big thing. Um, the actual base price, something like 30 or 40 grand more. No. Yeah. Um, 30, 40,000 Although I saw a thing that was quite interesting that the way that um, inflation's worked out, it's, it's not you know, it's not 30 grand in it's your pocket, it's five grand or something. It's a big difference in the last few years. But um, I think the only difference is probably the bumpers, the wheels, and you can get rear seats in a tour. That's a standard point two thing, though, isn't it, really, yeah. with Porsche? It's a midlife refresh and then make everyone that is yeah. obsessed with having the newest one buy the new one. And it's, it harks back to that same thing. It's manufacturers, governments wanting people to buy new cars. Stop yeah. buying new cars, buy classic cars. They're much better. 
Um, yeah. And then, uh, favourite bit of news, Renault are considering releasing a super hot hatch edition of the Renault 5 in the release set, so that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Hot cool. hatches are in. Well, and I the think Yaris they're all electric, proved, aren't they? <laughs> with the Yaris proved, though, with the, the GR thing. Yeah. There is a market for it. We love hot hatches. Everyone Definitely. loves a hot hatch. Always do one of the sales, don't we? Yeah, they always all do. All hot hatches. Everyone loves always them. Do. They're not even sure why they buy them, but they just do. It's just good fun, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Is it the practicality? You can park, is that you can maybe sell you it. park the darn things as well. And you can sell them, can't you? I suppose yeah, it always you sell it to your partner. It's yeah. a practical car lock. Right, okay, so that all that serious stuff over and done with. Let's have a little bit of a quiz. Five quick questions, so nothing too quizzes. tricky. I've gone multiple choice, because I know you two are you're not very good with some of these facts and figures, are you, no. Fraser? I mean, most of this stuff is before you were born, so. Yeah, most probably all of it. V12 themed here. <laughs> when was the first ever V12 produced? Multiple, multiple choice, choice isn't it? <laughs> 1904, 1915, or 1922? Okay, I don't know, say 1904. Yeah. Why not? I'll go 1915. So it's going to be over 100 right. years ago. 1904. Yeah. So a long, long time ago. Probably an American car of some sort, I'd have thought. Oh, a bit later. Okay, so what was the first car to feature air conditioning? Was it a Mercedes Benz, a Packard? Or BMW? Probably the Packard. Packard. America were always ahead of us. It'd be a Packard. Good answer. That's so those early cars have yeah. got, you know, auto headlight adjusters and oh, just yeah, stuff that we well, no, just. If you, got. if you look, especially in the 50s, I know. you know, people here would drive around a little Ford Anglia or whatever at the time. Over there, oh, most of the cars had electric seats. They had this. Yeah, yeah. Just folding all of it. hoods, yeah. the electric. The, it's it's just a different, really. different ball game over there. Yeah. Uh, what was the first car manufacturer? to feature powered steering. Was it Chrysler, Ford, or Nissan? Pro probably Chrysler. Oh, I don't know, Nissan. It was Chrysler, on the same thought process. Again, the Americans, uh, Americans getting in there first. Yeah. Yeah. Chrysler in the sort of 20s and 30s. They like to be lazy, I don't know. It's sort of a combustion of the same. Things back in the 20s and 30s, they were quite, you know, quite a luxury yeah, yeah, car yeah. compared yeah. to a Ford, yeah. so yeah. Um, which <laughs> South Korean car company owns the luxury car brand Genesis? Hyundai. I was only because that's the only one I can remember. Well, do you know, yeah. I didn't realise this that Hyundai actually owned Kia as well. I thought they were rivals. Actually, Hyundai owned Kia and they own Genesis. They own a didn't, fair few of those things, and they're looking at possibly that. selling some of them off. That was new, news yeah, to talking me. Talking about those American cars, upcoming in sale, we've got an Edsel and a Cadillac yeah. already consigned. Good Both one. featuring a lot of those things. Edsel's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Edsel's an interesting car. Yeah, but this one's in pink as well. Great. You can't miss it. Suit you. Well, you say Mark Tim and I said, oh, I like that colour. But yeah, of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> Always then, question him. Um, yeah. Finally, and back to the V12s, and back to that first question, where was the first V12 ever produced? Now, was it Birmingham, Norwich, or Putney? Oh. Birmingham in America, I bet. <laughs> Tricky. Well, you know, as it's, as it's my hometown, I'll say Birmingham. It's Birmingham it's Putney. Oh. Oh. First ever V12 was developed in Putney and it was actually created what, for the rowing racing, club or something. Racing boats. Oh, what yeah. was for boats? <laughs> what was for boats? Obviously, very quickly after the Winnington aircraft, I think it was. But yeah, it was actually for racing boats. There you go. There you go. Who won that? I think I probably did. I think it was probably a draw, wasn't it? It was a draw on my side. Oh, we'll have a rematch, shall we yeah. then? <laughs> Right, chaps, thank you very much for that. No, so we've thanks. decided that although Ferrari are trying to kill off the V12, we're going to keep trying to sell We're going to keep selling it. Yeah, keep flying that flag. Keep those classic V12s going. Maybe buy one and drive it in London just to give you the <laughs> middle finger to Sadiq Khan. Yeah. Um, so that's a wrap. And as usual, thank you for listening and watching, of course. Now, if you do like to subscribe and give us the thumbs up, make comments, by all means, heckle us. It's not a problem. Pick up if we've done anything wrong. Without you guys, obviously, we wouldn't create these podcasts. Next auction is the 23rd of November at Mercedes-Benz World, oh, good of course. One. Always look forward to that. It's a fantastic yeah. venue, fantastic Last auction. Last one of the year, always yeah. good as well. Please do come and join us, especially if you want to buy or if you want to sell, obviously, contact the office. Equally, you can watch it on YouTube, so don't miss that one. It's a great event. Um, and if you guys would like to come and watch one of these podcasts live, put something in the comments. We're thinking about doing something next year, perhaps with Vicky and Tom, whereby we can have a live event with these podcasts, and then you can really heckle us in person. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.